During the COVID-19 pandemic, Norway launched a national fintech project aimed at limiting the financial impact of the crisis. Now, interestingly, this was done in just three weeks' time. As other countries continue to tackle the challenges posed by COVID-19, we take a deeper look into Norway's actions in hopes of learning something that all of us can apply. Eidar Kreutzer, Chief Executive Officer of Finance Norway, will moderate a panel. With, them. With him will be Hans Christian Holt, Director of Norwegian Tax Administration, the Norway Finance Minister, Jan Tor Sanner, and Kirsti Braden, the Chief Executive Officer of DNB ASA. Now let's go over to IDAR to learn the secrets behind Norway's quick reaction to COVID-19. My name is Idar Kreutzer. I'm the CEO of Finance Norway, the industry federation for Norwegian financial services industry. Uh, together with me here today, I have the group of people uh, best suited to answer the question, how was it possible? I'm happy to introduce you to uh, the Norwegian finance minister, uh, Jan Tore Sanner from the Conservative Party. Welcome, Jan Tore. Uh, Hans, Thank you so much. Hans Christian uh, Holte, uh, at the point of departure, you were the CEO of the Norwegian tax authorities, but uh, now you have uh, uh, been given an uh, even bigger job, uh, perhaps as a, as a prize for the job you did on this one. Uh, now you are heading the Norwegian Labour and Welfare uh, Administration. Welcome, Hans Christian. Thank you. Uh, and Kerstin, you are having the pleasure of being the CEO of the biggest bank in, uh, in Norway, DNB. Happy to have you here, Kerstin. Thank you. Nice to be here. Would have liked to be in Singapore, but we're there online. Next time, next time. Jan Tore, uh, I would like to ask you the first question. Uh, in your opinion, what is the main reason why this was possible in three weeks? that normally takes 12 to 14 months? Well, um, from my point of view, it was uh, urgent to design the support scheme with fast processing and uh, fast transfer so that uh, funds were funneled out to companies when they needed it the most and uh, not several months uh, after. Since we have... Uh, a, a, lean, a lean organization under the Ministry of uh, Finance, we had no manpower available to process applications manually. So it was critical to set up an automatic scheme where companies could uh, apply on a website and the application were, were processed quickly and automatically. Looking back, the support scheme worked very well. And uh, your question, why was it possible in such, such a short time span? Well, the short answer is good work and good cooperation between the staff in the ministry and uh, the tax, uh, tax authorities in designing uh, the rules of uh, the scheme and the tax authorities and the banks in setting up the technical solution of the scheme. And believe me, they worked day and night. Indeed, they uh, did. Uh, and Hans Christian, uh, Jan Tore, the, the finance minister, he pointed at you and said, uh, you are the Norwegian government in this, uh, in this context. You represent the Norwegian state and, um, and, and you are responsible for the money uh, in play here. Uh, how was it possible? What, what was the key reason uh, you were able to do this in, in this short, uh, short time frame? Well, Idar, I think uh, I would like to uh, point to several factors, actually. And I think uh, Jan Tore has already touched upon several vital issues uh, in this respect. Uh, when we got this, uh, this huge task and also this very, uh, very aggressive deadline, I must say, Jan Tore, uh, it was, uh, firstly, I think the, the fact that we had good teams in place, both in the finance sector and also the, the tax administration that worked uh, agile, 
uh, very very smooth and flexible organizations to develop new new solutions. I think that was important uh, to get really quick up to speed. Uh, secondly, I think the uh, closeness to the leadership, the top leadership in our organizations. For example, Idar, you and I uh, co-chairing the steering group for this work. I think that was important as well. Very short uh, way to the decision making and also clarifications. <coughs> Uh, thirdly, I think the, the cooperation that we have been developing on both our sides uh, previously on different solutions uh, that we could build upon, we had already warmed up the cooperation between us, the, the public-private uh, cooperation. I think that was important as well. And finally, I must say it was new to me how closely the regulatory work uh, and the technical work went together in this uh, particular effort. Thank you, Hans Christian. And, and, and Kerstin, uh, when, when, when I called you, I think you hesitated for 30 seconds before you said, uh, yes, of course, <laughs> we, we, are, we are ready to go on, on this. You, you had uh, up to 40 people working day and night, uh, and you achieved fantastic things in, uh, in a very, very short uh, frame, uh, t time frame. Uh, what was the key reason uh, why this was possible? No, I think uh, I think uh, both the finance minister and Hans Christian has point pointed to important uh, important elements that that I very much uh, support. And one other thing I would say is that uh, in a time of crisis, people really step up and and do the uh, the impossible. Uh, and this was really such a situation, I think, across all of our organizations and people who were involved in uh, in this work. But three points that that i would highlight one is is norway being a very highly digitized society uh we had digital value chains and and an infrastructure to build on uh, secondly a tradition for cooperation uh, and trust i think was extremely important for everyone just to run uh, along and uh, and work with with a common objective and the third thing that i would mention for us on our side, it was extremely important that we, for for a few years already, have had built in-house highly skilled technical teams who was very very close to the business. They understood the business. There were short uh, short ways of communication, uh, working also agile, as Hans Christian is saying, for uh, for the tax authorities. I think all of these ingredients, with a direct line to the top and and a very clear mandate, was extremely important and the 30 seconds either of hesitation that was sort of twitching the mind from initially you think about the, the physical and, and the dialogue with businesses because these were businesses requiring the support but the 30 second what, what was needed to say we need to build a digital infrastructure that's the only thing that can work in order to distribute the solution. Exactly Th thank you thank you Kerstin. Uh, Jan Tore, Kerstin mentioned that uh, uh, Norway is, is a digitized uh, society. Uh, you are probably <coughs> the finance minister in one of the most digitized economies on, uh, on the planet. How does this uh, affect uh, your work and how, is how, how important was that uh, when you look back on the success of this, uh, uh, this particular project? That was, of course, uh, very important. And as uh, Kerstin said, uh, we have a high degree of uh, uh, digitized uh, society and also the public sector is uh, digitalized. Uh, and we gave the task to the tax authorities, which has a long standing for innovative technical solutions and uh, also a large and adva advanced IT group in-house. Since several years back, our tax return of ordinary citizens has been digitized. Your tax re uh, return is sent to you on a secure website and automatically accepted unless you do amendments. So uh, the tax authorities have a long tradition in linking access to different registers, including access to bank accounts, payroll data, income data, and more. Hans Kristian, was that important? Uh, I mean, you, your people, 
they have been used to developing uh, a digitized uh, tax system and structure in, in Norway. And in fact, we have been together in uh, presenting uh, the, the tax system as, 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 as a world leading digital tax, tax system. Uh, but you also have a Norwegian public and a Norwegian business sector used to using your digital solutions. Um, I guess that was an important part of, uh, of the issue too. I, I'm sure it was actually. And I think uh, if I should point to, <laughs> I must say that uh, maybe as a bit of a surprise, uh, the Norwegian tax authority uh, honestly, is quite popular in in the society in Norway. Uh, I think that's you know it's uh, due to the tasks that the tax authority is actually performing. It's uh, it's quite hard to become popular in that that role. But I think uh, maybe one important uh, issue in gaining that popularity over the years has been exactly that uh, we have been digitizing a lot. We have a digitally literate uh, public. And we have been able to make things very simple uh, for a common taxpayer. So uh, when we have the tax returns actually on, on uh, each and one of us uh, mobile phones, uh, it's very simple. And it's actually, uh, honestly, it's, a, it's also a bit of a problem that uh, people don't really uh, go in and check their, their tax uh, returns because they... Uh, have quite much confidence in that system. Mm. But I think the, the uh, general ability to use digital solutions in, in Norway, that's a, a huge gain both for the private and the public sector. And I think uh, it's a benefit that we have, together with also what uh, Shashti mentioned earlier, the, the uh, uh, level of trust that we have. I think those two goes together hand in glove. We need to have that confidence that trust also to take full use of the uh, digital solutions. Thank you. Kerstin, we have to move over to, to the financial services uh, sector. Uh, I mean, you are heading the biggest bank uh, in one of the most digitized economies on, on, on the planet. Uh, and uh, you must be, uh, I mean, you must have uh, very ambitious targets when it comes to technical solutions and, uh, uh, and digital customer interface and, uh, and everything uh, in, in the bank. That must have been important when it comes to dealing with something like this. But uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, the, the ambition and the level of digital solutions in a bank like, like DNB? Um. Absolutely, and, and to start sort of building on Hans Christian's uh, messaging as well, I would say that both the public sector and the financial sector has, have both been driving forces in the Norwegian society towards uh, digital uh, maturity, and, and, and this has been uh, a vital element of technology coming a more, a more and more important part of our business, and also the expectations from our customers. Uh, the benchmark from our customers is not what uh, other players in the financial industry are, are offering, but it's what other advanced digital uh, interfaces and, and, and the large tech companies, Google and Facebook, I mean, they expect us to deliver the same type of, uh, of services. So this has, for the past few years, led to uh, a, a huge transformation, uh, completely restructuring our frontline distribution. We have very few branches uh, left. Uh, I'd say only 10% of our people probably work uh, frontline in, in branches. And then a growing part of the group is, uh, is working on technology or, or developing uh, products and services. Um, there is one, uh, we broadly say that our customer interaction, only 1% of our customer interaction is through physical contact and dialogue. And the part that is growing is really growing on uh, mobile. And uh, here we have uh, decided a few years back to move towards the cloud in order to uh, rapidly build new functionality and, and solutions like you typically see for, for tech companies. This has been uh, instrumental in terms of uh, keeping a lead position in terms of cost efficiency uh, in order to stay profitable, in order to continue to invest for, uh, for customers' solutions. And I, I just round off by saying that it wouldn't have been possible without Hans Christian and the team uh, with the tax authorities leading the way, having the data that we need in order to provide 
digital loans, for instance, on a secured basis, uh, they they made sure that the data from the tax declarations are digitized and, and we share through strict agreements, of course, the data so that we can access the information that is relevant in order to digitize our processes. So, but but it's really a transformation. Jan Tore, uh, seen from the ministry's point of view, I mean, you are responsible uh, politically for the financial services uh, sector. How do you reason when you see the Norwegian financial services sector and the digital development that we have seen over the last couple of years? The speed of transformation, is it a problem or is it uh, an advantage? <laughs> and, and, and how does this affect uh, the discussion and the relationship? As Kerstin said, the financial sector and also the banking sector have been um, digitized uh, for, for a long, long time. Um, and I think it's possible because uh, we have a high level of uh, education in the general uh, public, which uh, enable us to digitalize uh, the banks and the public sector, and we have the whole society with us. Uh, and I think uh, Kerstin once said that uh, uh, the banks is more an advanced fintech company uh, than um, a traditional bank. Um, and in Norway, almost all the bank offices have been closed down and replaced by web-based bank services. And the employees uh, in the banks are not traditional bank clerks but uh, IT engineers. And the whole population is taking, taking part of this digitalization, including the elderly people in, in Norway, uh, which you would presume have a more uh, distant relationship to, to computers. Exactly. Uh, and you are pointing at a very uh, important uh, issue, namely, namely competence. Um, and both Hans Christian and, uh, and Kerstin, first, first Hans Christian, uh, I mean, Norway is a small country in the outskirts of the world. Uh, we have giants out there, uh, I mean, the US, China, some of the key players with enormous resources uh, developing their uh, skill set when it comes to digitization, when it comes to software development. Uh, how do you view the level of competence in, um, in, in, in Norway? The, the competence is uh, maybe, it could be phrased as, uh, surprisingly high, given the, uh, as you say, we're a small country, we don't have those huge resources. Uh, and I think one of the, uh, one of the um, uh, reasons for the, the kind of competence we have in Norway in this field is... Uh, um, first, uh, uh, Jan Tore pointed out the, the general importance of the education level in society. I think that, uh, that's, a, that's an important factor. I think one of the reasons uh, uh, why we have a quite good competence in this area in, in Norway is that we, we have been collaborating with a lot of countries. Uh, we're a quite open uh, country. And I think that also goes into uh, sort of academic openness and, and a lot of uh, exchanges uh, also in the technical um, academic field. And also, uh, as we have been talking about already in this conversation, I think there is a very good uh, a mix uh, of an exchange of experiences and knowledge between the private sector and the public sector. Is that the same uh, picture you see, Kerstin? Uh, well, one of our key priorities is to increase our attractivity uh, towards uh, engineers and, uh, and people who are skilled on, uh, on the technology side. But we're also very mindful about combining that competence with the business that we're actually running because technology in itself won't bring us uh, towards delivering banking services uh, to the people. And I think that is, that is part, of, uh, part of the key. But I, I think we have good access and I think we have uh, a strong level of competence in Norway across the public sector, across the finance sector and across the healthcare sector is also another area where, where Norway is very advanced in terms of uh, building software solutions and, and technology. And I think maybe one of the things that we, it happens that 
startup companies who are built on technology in Norway are rapidly sold uh, sold out and not necessarily scaled in Norway. But I think one of the things that makes me extremely optimistic now is that the real value lies in combining technology with the knowledge of the business and the knowledge of, of the processes. And, and with the level of technology competence we have uh, and the tradition for cooperating and combining that with the industry and, and the processes, I think this is where the real advantage lies uh, for Norway as, uh, as, as we move ahead. Uh, and, and I think this, this is a very exciting opportunity. And besides that, I think we should also give some advertising for, for Norway to all the tech uh, experts out there. I think Norway is a great country to be in. Mm. And, and increasingly, we also see that we are attracting competence from, 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 from abroad. You cannot afford to let pools of talent uh, lay untapped. Um, for a long time, we have been working on the diversity uh, agenda, and I think surviving in, in in this world, if you only tap into half the population to look for talent, if you would would exclude women or men for that matter, or or only building competence in one area, I mean, I I think it's the fastest way to to failure uh, in in that sense, and and this just becomes increasingly important. We have. We have concentrated our efforts, I'd say, mostly so far in, in two areas, uh, and that's in terms of gender balance, where we now have very close to 40% uh, uh, of women uh, uh, being present on all management levels uh, in the company. Uh, we have increasingly also made progress in terms of diversity on competence. We've just talked about technology earlier, but we're also very attractive when it comes to employing uh, lawyers and legal educated people, which is extremely uh, important. But but I'd also be the first one to acknowledge that 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 we have just. Uh, we, we have just started. There, there are many dynam dimensions that we need to work harder on in the future. I think uh, inclusion, as Hans Christian is talking about, is important. Et uh, et uh, ethnicity is, uh, is another. Um, we have to mirror the society that we are a part of. There is no path to success sort of shopping single experts out there in the market paying the most. I think building this competence and this culture from within the company is uh, is the, the, the path to uh, delivering the best products and services to our, our customers. And, and we're strongly committed to continuing that path. The development of the reimbursement solution was based on a somewhat unusual collaboration between uh, politicians, the Ministry of Finance, government agencies, industry federations and private banks. Uh, and personally, you took a risk by trusting that this kind of uh, collaboration could deliver results um, in, uh, uh, in a very, very short, short time frame. Um, how do you explain uh, that such an uh, unusual collaboration is, is, is possible. What are the drivers behind this, and and uh, how did you? Uh, why did you t take the risk? <laughs> well, why did I take the risk? Because we had to. We we were in a crisis, and we had to look for for solutions. Um, and you have just said it. Uh, we enjoy. Um, a high degree of mutual trust uh, in our society. And uh, to, to crank out the design of uh, the compensation scheme, we called upon the banks and also the social partners with uh, uh, the employers' organizations, trade unions, to sit down with us and uh, discuss the facilities of uh, the support uh, scheme. In a way, uh, it is a high risk for a minister of finance to leave the treasury wide open. So um, uh, we, need, we needed to discuss the rules of, uh, of, of the scheme with the social partners and build uh, a common understanding of the situation. And uh, we did. After all, it's a common interest that small and large companies can survive a temporary shutdown in the, in the society. And um, 
In the spirit of openness, we also agree that uh, all the payouts under the scheme would be listed on a public website. And in the end of the day, several companies who received financial support and quickly came back in black actually decided to return their support to the ministry. That's a clear indicator of how, of how a high degree of uh, trust makes it easier to work jointly and unified in a time of crisis. Hmm. That's uh, very important lessons to, to learn. And Hans Christian, you have been a leader in inviting to this kind of public-private uh, partnership. So we have many years of experience. Was that important uh, when we suddenly were asked to do something like this? And, and, and how did that affect your decision-making process? Well, that I think it was uh, quite important actually when it comes to delivering this solution so rapidly because I think uh, we have been touching uh, many times uh, during this conversation uh, on the issue of trust and and uh, and, uh, and having that security to to make some quite brave moves uh, and I think uh, what we have been experience uh, experiencing you and I with, with the the consent-based uh, mortgage uh, solution that uh, made it possible to to draw uh, online some information from the tax returns to to check out the credit readiness uh, if um, the the customer were given consent to that. I think having done that, quite also quite uh, groundbreaking uh, experience together. Uh, and having very good results from that, I think that was a very good uh, kind of uh, vantage point for for, for this next uh, experience of corporations that we uh, cooperation that we have. Mm. I also like to to just add to the point that uh, Jan Tore made about uh, the openness of this solution. I think that was quite important uh, also for the trust uh, that people had uh, in this solution. Mm. I mean, really showing what uh, was going on. Uh, in in giving out uh, some funding uh, to the the uh, different companies in this uh, time of crisis, I think that also was a quite important uh, trait to get, to give this uh, solution a lot of uh, credibility. Mm. And, and and Kerstin, uh, you had uh, 30, 40 uh, employees working day and night, but they they worked together with. In total, uh, probably around 200 uh, IT developers in Bits, the infrastructure company that uh, that's a part of the Industry Federation, with the tax authorities and uh, and your own people, and also with the ministry and, and and a lot of people. And and it's a fact that they never met physically one time uh, during the three weeks when uh, when they developed this. Uh, were you surprised? Uh, was that a new thing? Uh, because this is, I mean, this must also be the ultimate uh, trust statement that it's it's possible 200 people from different organizations working together on something complex like this and be solutions oriented. Uh, what's your reflections on that? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to reflect here whether I was surprised, but I guess uh, what I remember is that we were all so focused on getting where we wanted to get that that really took all of the attention and and i th think we've touched upon trust amongst each other as institutions the four of us who are here but also the uh, the the unions and 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 the organizations in in designing the solution but i also think trust within the companies i think we as managers and leaders were willing to let the people who actually exactly. uh, could develop the solution uh, talk to each other and and that was also also instrumental, uh, and we uh, I'm not sure we even discussed the fact that the whole regulation and the law was worked on on, on the side, and, and we just thought that we'll figure out this, hopefully at, uh, when the time that's ratified it'll work, and, and then we'll figure out uh, how, how to deal with that, and uh, and it worked. Uh, but, but I think what was really the driving force here was was the purpose of what we were looking to to achieve and and, and this made everyone 
uh, really step up to the challenge. Mm. But I think it's important to say that the basis for what we did has been built on for years. Uh, we had a common infrastructure uh, as, as a bottom layer. We had uh, a lot of tools that we could build on. I think that there, there, it hadn't been possible if, if this was a new idea uh, that, that we, we should start on. Uh, and I think this has awoken in, in many economies around the world uh, a sense of urgency in order to digitize their, their economies uh, because we quite often talk about uh, this being part of the reason why Norway has fared better uh, than most other economies through the crisis. Actually, the ability to not only decide on the supporting measures, but distributing them as well. How do you motivate people to work 24-7 uh, for, for uh, uh, a number of weeks? I think for, for us, it was clearly management by, uh, by purpose and trust. Mm. And I still remember when we had the call, Idar, uh, the day before we had the call, I, I sat down with, or digitally, with the group who was leading payments and our new tech lab, who are the most advanced uh, technical engineers we have, uh, and our open banking experts, all essential to this solution. And they felt a bit useless because everybody was uh, occupied with the crisis and part of their innovation projects were put on hold and they were so eager to contribute. Mm. And when we talked the minute after, I turned around and I called them up and I said, I felt you were asking me for an unsolvable problem. Well, here you have one. <laughs> and, and they just ran with it. And and uh, they worked around the clock and they had three stand-ups every 24 hours. And I joined their stand-up a, a couple of times. And what we talked about was that they, what they worked on now was really the most important thing that they would ever work on in their lives because it would save businesses, it would save uh jobs for people it would uh, i mean extremely meaningful that was the, that was the biggest driver thank you Kerstin. and and as christian you i mean uh, the the norwegian labor market is is seen as well organized with strong trade unions and and you have been uh, running uh, government agencies uh, for a number of years uh, how come you are agile in a situation like this? Uh, what are the mechanisms that are making it possible to, to really roll up your sleeves and, and dig into something like this, given the structure and the nature of the Norwegian labour market? Well, well I think uh, Kerstin has really pointed out some of the, you know, the fundamental drivers that I also have seen uh, in the workforce, uh, in the organizations I, I, I have been leading. And I think, you know, it's the purpose, uh, it's the really meaningful purpose. And I think it's also, as Kerstin just mentioned, is the uh, urgency and, and uh, vital importance of this specific solution. I think was really also driving uh, my people uh, around the clock, and, and also uh, I think they they will never forget this. Neither will I, uh, because it was uh, quite uh, quite special. But I must say also that I think the the uh, general work ethics that I have seen in in uh, the tax authorities and and also the labor and welfare authority, for example, and, and uh, previous positions. Um, it's a very, it's a very content-driven, it's a very purpose-driven uh, work ethic that also think I think lends itself to uh, really step up when it's uh, is perceived to be needed. And um, gladly, I mean, or, or I mean, luckily, we have not had uh, many crises like this uh, of this kind of urgency. But I, I'm sure uh, also we have some other examples if we think back on a quite important uh, tasks that, and, and people actually step up to, uh, to deliver in those uh, times. Uh, finance Minister, you took a personal risk when you went on national TV and said to uh, the Norwegian corporate sector that, guys, uh, in three weeks we are going to deliver something that nobody has delivered before. <laughs> uh, and my questions to you, two questions. One is, uh, were you a happy guy three weeks after when you were able to go on national TV and say that we delivered? Uh, and the second question, uh, what, what are your thoughts going forward based on this uh, and the experiences? Well, um, 
We were in a crisis and we, st and we still are. Uh, when we uh, had this discussion in the mid of March, um, I trusted you and uh, you trusted each other and we talked together and uh, we found a solution. So um, you said three weeks, I said three weeks, uh, and we made it. And of course I was uh, happy. I think I was happy for uh, five minutes, and then I was starting to think, what are we going to do tomorrow? Because uh, business were in the crisis, uh, people lost their job, so um, um, we had to uh, still work together to find solutions. Now uh, we, have, um, we, are, we are still in, in the crisis, uh, but we have to now also look forward and think how can we be a strong society uh, when, when we're out of this crisis. And I think we shall still be a society with high uh, level of trust. And it's important right now to invest in digitalization, uh, in um, uh, technology, so we can reduce uh, the climate emissions, uh, the climate risk, and also invest in, in education and inclusion. Uh, for, for what I'm afraid of is that in one year or two years ahead, we will still have um, high level, uh, too many without job. So we have to uh, still invest and uh, get business going so people can get back to, to the work. Jan Tore, Kjerstin, Hans Kristian, thank you very much for sharing your insights. And to all of you, thank you for listening. It's fascinating how Norway has had such foresight to allow her to act quickly in the face of the pandemic. We certainly look forward to learning more strong examples of how countries around the world are reacting to protect their interests as well as uh, how we discover the road to recovery.